Welcome back, my friends. We are building out a, a Twitter demo where we can uh, look at our bookmarks, filter, sort by different stuff that's based on the annotations, the contextual annotations that are added by Twitter's uh, machine learning. And we're doing this with Ruby on Rails. So in the last episode, we went through and did authentication. So if you haven't set up Twitter auth inside of, a, inside of your Rails app, head over and take a look at that episode. In this episode, we're gonna go out and build out a little Ruby client for interacting with the Twitter API. So in, uh, let's see. So the way I wanna do this is I'm actually just gonna create a new directory inside of app called Twitter. And that's gonna contain a new thing called Twitter client.rb. And I'm gonna start out uh, very simply. And we're gonna have just a couple different methods. So the, the, the first kind of like test method that I want is something like me. And by calling me on an instance of the Twitter client, I, I should expect to get back the data about my own sort of Twitter user. And so I'm gonna um, initialize all of these, the clients with a specific user. So uh, I'm gonna pass in the user here from our database. I'm gonna store that off so that we can use its token. Now me, what I wanna do, this is gonna be a get request to like slash user slash me. And this method, this get method doesn't exist yet. So I wanna define that. So we're gonna have this new method called get. We'll make this private too, so no one calls this from outside. And this is gonna take in the path and that should be a good start. So um, let's see here, I guess get will like reach down into request with, we'll pass in like the method symbol and also the path. And then inside of this other request method, we'll take in the method, we'll take in the path, and then we'll take in any like body, which might be just kind of like a, a hash or something, or uh, I don't know. We're, I, I think ultimately the post, post bodies for the Twitter API are JSON encoded. so. We'll just two string that, that thing and deal with, actually we'll just deal with post requests later. For now we only really need get requests. So um, let's see. So uh, what we wanna do, let's actually use rest client. So the rest, rest client gem. Um, okay, so rest client, great little HTTP client, very simple. Um, has this execute method where we can basically pass like lots of raw stuff and we don't have to use any of their built-in things. So let's use rest client dot, um, rest client dot request dot execute. And what does that look like? So it takes in the method. It also takes in the headers and a, maybe a payload. So this should be a good start for us. Okay. All right. Um, so there's gonna be some standard headers that we wanna pass. And there's gonna be some base URL that we want to um, concatenate with our path. So let's add in a constant here called base URL. And that's gonna be something like um, api.twitter.com slash two, I think. Documentation for users. All right, the API reference for user slash me. So yeah, api.twitter.com slash two slash user slash me. So that is the right base URL. Um, and then here, I guess we can con construct some like params and then we'll use those params as what we pass in. So we'll just pull these up here and our method is gonna be whatever was passed in. Our URL is gonna be our base URL plus our path. Our payload, we might not actually have a payload. So like if method is put, um, or method is post, then params payload is body dot to JSON. I'm not sure if that's gonna work, but we'll see. <laughs> okay, and then in terms of headers, I think we want some standard headers. Um, so we'll just go down here and say headers and we'll return something that looks like this. Authorization and bearer with our users token. I think we're also gonna need maybe like a user agent. We'll call this something like, I don't know, 
uh, Rails bookmark search. And OK, so I think that's going to be OK. And then I guess like also if the method is put or post, then our headers, so params, headers, we'll want to add a content type of um, application, JSON. All of this doesn't really matter too much. Um, the one other thing I want to do, though, is wrap up our request in a try catch block or a begin rescue block so that if it fails, we, we can look at that failure and tell what's going on. Um, so rails.logger.error e, and then we also want to return like e.response. So the, res the actual response when the REST client request fails is available on e.response, so we can always get access to that. So we're gonna execute this and pass in params, and I guess that's gonna give us back the response. And I think we wanna do json.parse um, response dot body and we want to symbolize the names of that JSON that comes back. I guess we'll also let's do the same thing for this response JSON dot parse. We'll just assume that that is well formed. Uh, and if not, then we'll have to figure out what we want to do with that. Um, now we have something that will like always return. Um, some valid JSON. Now I wanted to show you something cool that you can do with Ruby. It turns out that if you um, don't want to wrap a specific part of your code in the begin block, then you can actually omit the begin and the end. Like if you don't need stuff after the end, and then you can use like the whole method block, like the whole method above the rescue as sort of like, the begin area, and then you can have rescue at the same level as def. I don't know, kind of fancy, funky, um, whatever. Maybe this is more confusing because if you have a, if we have an error up here, that'll also get caught and it definitely won't have a response body, but whatever, like I just wanted to kind of like show that. Okay, let's see what we've got going on now. So we should have, we should be able to initialize a Twitter client passing in a user. We should be able to call users me, and that will make a get request passing down the path, which will construct some params that look like this. They do include the headers. The headers have our token and the authorization token. All right, so let's let's just let's give this a whirl. So we're going to say Rails, uh, no, Rails console. Now let's say like the client is Twitter client .new, user .last, and now we want to say. Ooh, Okay, headers is unexpected. Missing a comma there. All right, so c.me. Oh, no, uh, oh, it's undefined. Okay, because we need to add it to the bundle. So bundle add rest client. That should be the name of the gem. It used to have like a weird thing with the name. One of the names had underscores or didn't have underscores or something. Um, it was super confusing, but uh, it seems to be sort of uh, uh, cleaned up by now. So now we can say dot c dot me. Oh, boom, look at that. Okay, we got back our, our own data. This is amazing, this is great. This is exactly what we want. And we're able to like hit the Twitter API with that token that we got in the previous episode and get back our own sort of Twitter information. Now, inside of this example, the thing that, that's like really interesting is that they fetch your bookmarks and so I guess what we could do is like, yeah, let's let's update our client here, our Twitter client, to add a new method called um, bookmarks, and this is going to be a get request to users slash um, the ID of the user, so at user dot Twitter ID um, slash bookmarks, and this should get our bu bookmarks. So if I just say reload. C bookmarks. No, I need a new instance of a Twitter client. C bookmarks. Boom! There's our bookmarks. Isn't that so quick and easy? I love it. Okay, so we've got a bunch of bookmarks here. There's a, there's 13 results. I haven't bookmarked a ton, so we might have to go bookmark some stuff just to like get things to simulate. But um, there's a couple really cool things we can do with the Twitter API. So let's actually look over here for bookmarks. So I want to like just do a search for bookmarks. And 
Okay, bookmarks, API reference. So here is how we get a user's bookmarks. It's user to bookmarks. Um, and there is some rate limit. We can only do 180 requests per 15 minute window per authenticated user. That's important if we wanna like paginate through and fetch all the bookmarks. I think we can get 100 at a time. So that gives us, what is that, uh, 1,800 or whatever. I don't know, 1,800. <laughs> Um, okay, but what I wanted to look at is these query parameters. So we can pass in expansions and one of those expansions is the author ID. So as we're listing out our bookmarks, we want to show like the, who wrote the bookmark or, or who is the author of the bookmark and, um, a couple other things. So if we look back at the code that they have here, we can see expansion. No, let's, it's going to be, they, they pass it down from the front end. So expansions. Okay. So this is kind of the stuff that they add tweet fields, expansions for the author ID and the user fields. They want to see if the user is verified and get their profile image. Um, so let's add these same expansions. So like what we really want to do is add a query string here. That's something like tweet fields equals, and then this thing here that looks like this context annotations, comma created at, um, and then an ampersand and some other stuff, but it becomes a little bit hard to maintain if we're kind of like just hard coding this query string. So instead what I wanna do is add just like query here, and then I'm gonna add a new thing, query is equal to a hash dot to query. And now I can plop in whatever sort of stuff I want to inside of here. Now this is not like a super reusable Twitter client. This is like very strictly just for what we want. In practice, I would probably make it so I can, you know, take in a user ID and maybe take in the, you know, the query params or something. And then I would call like query params to query here and pass those down. But we're just kind of like hard coding a bunch of stuff here to keep it, to keep it super simple as we get started. So we're going to start with tweet fields points at, um, that's not going to work because it has a dot in it, but whatever, um, this thing. So we're going to put, we're going to make this a string a symbolized string. It's like a civilized string. Civilized. Um, expansions author ID. And then what is this one? This one is going to be user fields. And which, which fields do we care about? Well, we care about the verified and profile image URL fields. Okay. We don't actually care about verified. Nobody cares about verified. Right, you don't want that check mark. I would love the check mark, but I don't have it, so I'm a little bit salty. So that's just how it is. All right, so we say get Twitter user ID bookmarks. We pass in this query string, and I don't know. Let's give it a whirl. Let's see. So we'll reload, and then we want to make a new Twitter client and see dot bookmarks. Boom. Okay, this is awesome. All right, so we got back a bunch of bookmarks, but what you'll notice is that there's a bunch of other data here, like. Uh, particularly this context annotations, which is so crazy. Like it's so neat. This context annotations is like the machine learning things that Twitter thinks about this tweet. So it's, this tweet says, I don't just tip a letter. Okay. I saw this thing and I was laughing. I don't actually, I, there was like, I don't know. It's kind of trendy right now. I don't tip well at a restaurant. I bust my table. I seat the next group and I'm in the kitchen blanching fries. Um, and then inside of the context annotations, it knows that this is something about a person, Trixie Mattel, an entertainment personality in the world like Anderson Koopa or Miranda Springs. <laughs> okay, so um, so there's two pieces of each context annotation. There's a domain and an entity. So there's the domain and the entity. This entity or this domain's ID is 10 and the entity is, the entity's ID is this thing. So this is a person whose name is Trixie Mattel. Um, so what we're going to do is try to build up some like smart folders based on these context annotations. We're also going to build up and print out sort of information about the author. So we use that expansion um, technique or we passed in expansion for the author ID. You'll notice that when we're looking at the actual bookmark, the author ID is at the top here, but the author information is not embedded in the data about the bookmark. That's because it's pretty common or you might imagine that you would probably bookmark a ton of things from the same author. And rather than including all of that data, 
along with that bookmark every single time, they don't plop it inside of the data. They plop it down inside of this includes. So down here we have a second object that comes back, which is this sort of collection of users. And this user's ID will tie back to um, the author ID of, um, of the tweet that we bookmarked. Okay, so let's work on um, building out our UI for this. So we've got some bookmarks. Let's go Rails G, Rails G controller bookmarks. We're gonna start with an index. And we're gonna kind of just start with um, adding in here resources, bookmarks, bookmarks controller. And we're gonna say something like, um, we wanna create a new Twitter client with our current user. And then we wanna call like bookmarks is client.bookmarks. And then on our bookmarks index, we're gonna just render out like a pre-tag of the JSON for those bookmarks. Pretty generate, it should make it so that it has spaces, but we're missing a current user. So this is gonna just fail for now, okay. Uninitialized constant bookmarks controller Twitter client. I think that's because we haven't restarted the server. We haven't, we also haven't set up a current user. So this should fit. Okay. Undefined local variable or method current user. So let's jump into our application controller and add a method for current user. It's going to be something like user.find by the ID of session user ID. Okay. This is going to map back to our. Um, the, the thing that we tagged here or like cookied right here. So when the, when the user first logs in, we create that user in the, that user model in the database. Then we take their ID and we put it into the session or like into the cookie. And then what that means is that for every subsequent request that uh, user makes, we're going to be able to look that user up in the database by ID. And I'm using find by ID here so we don't get a 400 and I'm going to say at current user or equals that so that we sort of memoize it. We don't have to look it up a bunch of times in case we need to call current user a bunch of times. So here I'm going to say, I'm going to make another method called require user. And this is going to just say like, if there's no current user, um, we're going to redirect to the root page where they can log in. So we're going to go back to our bookmarks controller, say before action require user and let's refresh. Great. Okay. So there's no bookmarks. Why is there no bookmarks? Okay. There it is. I don't know what that happened. I was odd. All right. We have our bookmarks. They're rendering on the page and let's see named people in the world like Nelson Mandela. <laughs> okay. What, what in the world is this? Okay. I, okay. So let's see. There's a, there's definitely some other things that I've bookmarked. Uh, uh, let's see. You don't have to be a, uh, you don't have to contribute code to contribute to open source. Yes. You can totally just write docs or file bugs or whatever. Um, so let's call that good for this episode. In the next episode, we'll go through and we'll build out a UI for rendering out these bookmarks. We'll build out a UI for the smart form or the smart folders and things like that. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, hopefully this was useful and, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.